Hello everyone and welcome again in this new tutorial. Today we will talk about the I2C pass communication or inter-integrated uh, circuit pass communication. Uh, this is it is actually is a serial protocol. Okay, it's meant for low speed with only two wire interface. Uh, it's, made, it's first developed by Philips Semiconductor in 1982, uh, which mainly was proposed for TV communication for internal TV boards. Okay, and it's suitable for short distances with a couple of meters only, and it's very popular to be used these days by a lot of MBD system manufacturers and designers. That's why we are highlighted in this tutorial. The data transfer rate is start with 100 kilobit per second in the standard mode and can go up to 400 kilobit per second for the fast mode. Then it will go for one megabit per second in the fast mode plus and also can uh, go up to 3.4 megabits for the high speed mode and the ultra fast mode can support 5 megabit per second and for this interface or for this uh, pass communication got several names actually you can find it as i2c or i square c or iic or twi which is all they are referring to the same uh, bus interface, which is I2C or inter-integrated circuit. And for the TWI, it's mean two-wire interface. Okay, now we come to the features. The feature of this bus is required only two wires or only two signals, which is the SDA, the serial data, and SCL, the serial clock. Okay, each device that connect to these two wire actually can be addressed, can be addressed using the software. Okay, each device that connect to this interface or to these two wires, actually it's software addressable. So that will give us freedom to, 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 to set our own address to any device that connect to this uh, bus network and later we will see how to implement this <clears throat> okay so this system actually uh, use a simple master slave relationship where we have the master take the control over the buses and it will we will see how it will initiate the the, the request to request some data from the slave or ask the slave to do something by sending the data to slaves Okay, where we can see that the master operate as transmitters or the master could be receiver. Either they send the data to the slave or request data from the slave. This all we'll see later how to implement it on the uh, hardware. I mean, hardware with the software. Okay, it's true multiple master bus. Uh, these these uh, buses actually it's they will handle all the data collision detection and also they are able to prevent any data corruption especially if we have multiple master okay because sometimes we have multiple master and as we said the master will take the control of this bus so this bus also in the algorithm it's able actually to detect the collision and also prevent it that can uh, guarantee that our data is transferred safer to the receiver. Then actually we have on-chip filtering uh, circuits that filter all the spikes and noise that being generated inside the line of the bus. Okay, and also the number of the ICs that or number of the any devices that connect to this two wires can be uh, as maximum as the addresses because as we as as we said just now 
the addresses of this one is is uh, flexible we can set any address however it's got the maximum according to the maximum capacity of the address which is uh, 128 as we will see after this okay so this is the the general block diagram the general block diagram of how to connect the i2c so as we can see here we have only two wire a cl and the sda for data and clock only for all the network and here we have our devices okay so here we have the master a we assume the microcontroller is the master master one and master two actually i took this picture from the i2c data sheet it's already available online i will try to link in the full complete data sheet in the video description for you to to check it out if you need more details and all the rest of these devices actually they are slaves you can see we need only two wires however we miss here if you can see here actually we miss two very important lines or signals which is the ground the ground for sure need to be connected to all the devices we assume this is a ground signal also should be connected to all because this is our reference and also the vcc why i draw the vcc actually the vcc no need to be come to all we can use as much vcc as we want maybe these two with one vcc the others with another vcc another line maybe 3.3 volt but the thing is we need to pull pull up these two lines to the vcc for one device only or at one device i say for this the master we need at this master this master say connect to this vcc we need to pull this high so we need two resistors here I'm sorry for this. It should be looks like a resistor and another resistor for the SEL. Okay, we need these two resistors to pull this line high. This resistor could be around 10K should be okay. 7 to 10K should be okay. Okay, this pull up is very important to guarantee <clears throat> the functionality of the network. Okay. We now come to the properties of these uh, I2C passes. They are very, very low current consumption. And as we said before, there's a lot of noise, uh, noise rejection and noise filtering circuits. So it's noise immune system and can support very large voltage and also can operate at very uh, wide range of temperatures especially for the industrial applications and also the master will take the control over the network where it will generate the clock and has no address again master it will initiate the communications if it's required to send or receive and here is the addresses that we talked before the slaves uh, uses a unique seven bit address which can be from one or zero actually from zero up to one two eight or one two seven okay so today we will implement this network here we have three arduino unos one is the master and two slaves then we connect them as we see here and by the way for the arduino uno a5 is the scl we can see this A5 is the SCL. We connect all the A5s together to the SCL line. And the A4, we connect it to the SDA, all the three together. Then, for sure, ground, we, should, we connect to the ground, but the VCC, we don't care because we will connect to the laptop or to the computer, so we don't care about the VCC. The most important is the ground, so we, 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 we could have a reference. And one also thing that I forgot to draw here, actually we have to connect from the VCC of the master only, only one time, we connect the resistor, the 
pull up resistor one for the SDA another one for the SCL and these two resistors the pull up resistor 7 to 10k ohm should be okay okay so this is our circuit this is our network we i already implemented for you so we go after this to see how to uh, write the code for the master and the slave so and how we will learn how to send the the data from the master to the slave slave and also we will learn how to address them for example we address this as slave one this as slave two and also how we request data we request this slave to send back some data so all this we will address it in the software part after this okay so let's go for the software okay guys so here we have reached to the fun part where we will start to write the code for the three arduinos that we already connect them as we saw in the previous uh, slide so first of all i will start with the master code so let's highlight if i write a comment this is the master code okay so first of all and lucky of first that we have the library that it will take care of all the uh, side job of the i2c so we just have to include it to take the take the hard job for us which is the which is called wire okay and then for the master this okay now for the master uh, after we declare the library we need to uh, initiate the wire by using wire dots begin mm, what else it has to initiate the wire then Mm, okay so now we come to the to send first we will send send data to the slaves as we say we have two slaves slave one and slave two so how to send data we will start by calling the address of that slave and we saw here when we initiate the master we don't need to have any address see we didn't put any address because this is the master but we will use some addressing here when we begin initiating the wire for the slaves okay so now wire dot begin transmission to slave number one okay first we initiate the transmission or trigger the transmission with the slave number one then we send the data wire dot rise <coughs> mm, here's the right is small not capital now we write the data here which data i want to send data i want a variable let's say i so we have to declare a variable for this so later we can increase by one let's add here let's say byte i equal to zero Okay, so I will send this i. So this i will start from zero. Then here, 
I will increase the I by one. Then here I will end the transmission. Wire dot end transmission with slave one. Okay, so this is for the slave one. Now I will go to send to slave two. For slave two, exactly the same. So I just copy this. This is to, to slave one. This one is the code to talk to slave two. So we have to change this to two and two. But here I don't want to use the same I because this one is a byte, so start from zero until two five five. So or two four five two uh, sorry two five four. Mm, so I want this one to go from zero and increasing, assigning this one, descending will go from the top to the zero. So I will Send two five four minus i. Mm -hmm. Then I'll add some delay. I'll say one second. Okay. So this code is for the for the master. Looks okay. And we will send as you see here. I have five Arduinos. Okay, so the Arduino of COM5 will be my master. So I will send. We want to save. Thank you. Okay, it's compiling. Hopefully, we didn't do any mistakes. It's very simple code. Yes, here we go. It's uploading. Okay. Done. Thank you, dude. So we have finished with the master. Now we will go to check the slave. So we will make new. So this one will be for the slave. Okay. Let's put some comment here. This is slave code. Okay, for the slave, for sure, also the first thing we have to do is to include the library. So, hash include uh, wire. This library actually is already there installed in the Arduino. It's a default library, so I don't need to download it. Mm, don't want this. I don't want this. So, here for the initializing. We will see how to initialize the I2C wire dot begin. And here we will initialize with the number where this number it will represent the the address of that uh, board or that uh, node inside the network. Okay, so now the master just now he sent the data, so this one will receive the data. So the slave will be receiving. So wire dot on receive. Okay. Because that one will be transmitted, this one will be receiver. On receive, we will go to the function, let's say RCV. And also, yeah, this is a function to receive. So now we will build for the for the loop. We don't have to write anything inside the loop here because everything will be handled by the function. Okay. Here is the receive function. Right to see receive function. Okay. So it will start with void because it will not return. Uh, 
uh, rcv c function okay inside this what we have to do first to receive or read the data read the data from the i2c on the i2c so first we have to check and make sure that the that the wire is available is available yes as long as it's available what i want i want to receive my data let's say i put it on mm, r equal to wire dot three okay and here i have to declare my my variable mm, let's declare it here let's say it's an um, integer as actually this one will not send more than one byte but it's okay let's say assume it's an integer integer r okay so r will be the, the 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 variable that it's receiving the data from then let's see what we have to do with this data that we receive from the master uh, okay let's serial dot print let's print it online uh, sorry print it on the on the serial print line r but before that, let's add some serial not print. Let's say slave one got I got this. Mm, okay, it looks completed now. So this one for slave one. Mm, yeah, because this is slave one. Okay. So let's compile. See if we forgot something. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess we forgot. We forgot. We forgot to initiate the the the, the Syria. Um, so here we have to write Syria. Let's begin. Uh, baud rates nine six hundred. It looks nice. Okay, so now let's see. So just now we update the master on five. Let's update um, the slave on number com four. Update cancel. Okay, done. Thank you very much. And now I will write the one for the. For them for the slave to actually slave to is the same so i are gonna use the same code but i will change this to any number let's say two actually not any number we should match the one on them on the master otherwise the master will talk to someone else uh this one will change to two and two got this thing so i will change mm, this one to six and same thank you so now, if you remember, I have COM5, my master, COM4 is slave1, COM6 is the slave2. Okay, so let's open this, this is the slave. And this is the other slave. Okay. Okay. So as we can see here, for the slave one, it's go from uh, zero all the way to two five five. You see, it will be increasing. This one will be decreasing from two five five all the way to zero. Nice. So now we have done the first part of this tutorial where we send the data from the master to the slave but now let's say we want the master to request data back from the slave as as well 
So let's close this. Let's see if we can change the master. Yeah, we can change this master to request some data from the slave. Mm, so instead of only we sending, so here we send, actually we want to request let's say after this here we will request from the slave let's say which slave let's say slave one let's say we request only from one slave just for for, for example mm, how to request we write down wire dot request from Okay, now I will request from where? From, from slave number one, I will request two bytes. Here. Please, uh, focus here. Here, the master is requesting two bytes from slave one this one is very important you have to the first uh, uh, what they call the first um, variable or the first location in this function the first parameter is actually is the slave uh, address that you want to talk to which address you request from which address the second uh, variable is how many bytes you want from this address or from this slave so i'm requesting two from slave number one now while after i request so the slave will send back to me so while now wire is available as long as this wire is available what i will do for sure, I will read this uh, byte. And this byte, actually, I'm planning to send the characters. Okay, so I'm actually, I mean, characters, two characters, it's mean is a string. So, string, let's call it S. And for sure, we have to declare the string somewhere here. Let's say string S, just like this. So now s plus equal wire dot read. Nice. But here actually we have to tell the string that this one, or we have to convert it into a character. Because here we are concatenating the characters into this string. Because when we send from the from the slave it will send one byte per per transmission or per, per per clock so here we have to concatenate it again mm, yep so this one should be okay we store it here then we display on the serial let's say serial dot print uh, receive from the slave one receive from the slave one and here serial dot print line print line our s and here don't forget because after here actually we are concatenating if we are not empty out the old data it will keep add on add on uh, accumulating the old data so it's very uh good practice to uh empty the the, the data inside the string so as equal to an empty space that's all and let's add some delay and this one maybe 500 half a second 
Mm, here, okay, let's see what we have missed out. This one, okay, then we have read, print. Uh, yes, yes, we have to uh, initiate the serial. Serial dot begin on again 9600. Okay, mm, it looks nice. Let's update this to Arduino on COM5. Yes, correct. Upload, cancel. Okay, so here the master will requesting data two bytes and to be specific from slave number one. So now if I call back slave number one, hmm, where is slave number one? Okay, here is it. So here is the slave number one. There's a slave number one. So for the slave number one, what we need to do, so here we have the function for the receive data. Now we want <coughs> another function wire dot on request. Now the master is requesting from the slave. So let's call this function req. Um, so this is the i2c C function. Let's say this one is the I to C request function. Okay, again, void request. Okay, when the slave is request, sorry, the master is request from the slave, then we have to return back a data. Let's say. Mm, it's as simple as wire dot write any any data since here we are sending two bytes so let's say okay this one actually will work but this one got no I mean got no fun to do this so let's see what can we do maybe we can check we can check this number here remember it is a byte or is it integer actually i mean i'm receiving it so if i receive this uh, r is able to be divided by three without <clears throat> i'm able to be divided by three then i will return it's okay <clears throat> sorry if not i was i mean return no so i will check if uh r the one we receive here when I divide it by three is equal to zero is able to be divided by three I will okay return back okay else if not I will return back sorry not okay let's make this capital Mm. if this okay if this no oh, yep it looks okay now so this one for the one it's be on arduino which arduino oh com4 okay upload no. okay done so let's open this so this com4 for yes slave number one and where is slave number two where is it slave number two and where is for the master yes here's the master here we go okay so we can see here let me arrange this a bit nice so we can see here that the master is updating the slaves. You can see this. The master is updating the slaves. And at the same time, the master is requesting from the slave one whenever 
the, the number that the slave got is able to be divided by three, it will read 10 okay. If not, it will read 10 no. Okay, so by this, we have learned how to send and request data from and to the masters. It's very useful and very helpful. We can use this into many, many uh, projects for research or even industrial project. So I hope you have learned something new from this tutorial. Um, thank you for your listening and watching. I hope to see you soon. Please let me know if you have any question or comment in the comment below. Thank you very much.